Hey Lex, Coral, Jeff, everyone else down there in uh, Bansdale land. It's, um, I was really encouraged when you guys asked me to come down and do your men's camp, but uh, unfortunately you couldn't be there. But nevertheless, here we are, I'm gonna give you a video message. But before I start, for the people who are in the church who don't know me yet, uh, my name is John, John Canone, and this is where I live. This is the view from my house. See so right out there over the Hawkesbury and up the other side of the river there. It's a beautiful place. But uh, if you look over here, over my shoulder here, just over my right shoulder, all those buildings and things just there, they're actually making a movie there. A remake of the spook movie called Children of the Corn. And um, the other night there was a massive explosion, a big, big, uh, mushroom cloud of fire 30 meters wide or well, 10 meters wide and 30 meters high it was absolutely amazing but anyway that's enough of that now let's get down to business um i've got a, a lovely message for you guys and um, i'm looking forward to maybe coming down there one day maybe next year to the men's camp i don't know we'll see and uh i'll just come back inside where the lighting is a little bit better and for a video and i've got a message for you about the peace of god I'll put this down so you don't get seasick. How's that? And uh, I want to talk to you about peace because God's really been speaking to me personally about peace. So it's something uh, as of a revelation in my heart that <clears throat> that uh, is fresh for me. And um, so let's start with this scripture in 1 Corinthians 2. Verse 9 to 12. And if you're looking up the word, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 12. But it's one of my most favourite scriptures, by the way. As it is written, I has not seen, nor has ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man <clears throat> the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But, then, but then, so we think that, we think, oh, you know, it's going to be great, get to heaven, see the things that God's prepared that we can't even imagine how good it is. But then the next verse says this, but God has revealed them. Revealed what? Things that eye has not seen and ear has not heard. God has revealed them to us through his Holy Spirit. So I believe that we can have revelations of things that this eye cannot see in this world, that this ear <clears throat> pardon me, cannot hear in this world, and nor things that we can imagine. The Holy Spirit can reveal them to us through the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. And so it's the deep things of God that I want to talk about today. And um, I believe the deep things of God are very simple. Love, joy, peace, righteousness in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I think they're the deep things of God. And so the deep things of God aren't how to live a fantastic life aren't principles on how to have a better life. I believe the deep things of God are when we have intimacy with God. And so, <clears throat> and now we have received, verse 12, the spirit of the world. Sorry, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit from, from whom is from God, that we may know the things that have been freely given. Everyone say freely. <laughs> freely given to us by God. I think it's one of my most favourite scriptures. And so, um, <clears throat> hey Lex, Jeff, what do you think about my beard, mate? Got the GT stripe going on? Makes me go <clears throat> faster through life. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's like having a dog. You get the pat it all day, but you're the one getting all the affection. <laughs> anyway, enough of, enough of that silliness. I want to talk to you about the things that stop us from hearing the Holy Spirit to have a revelation of the deeper things of God. And I want to talk to you about peace destroyers. There's all sorts of things that rob us of our peace. You know, in family life, in relational life, in church life, disunity is a peace destroyer. Sin, a condemnation over sin is a peace destroyer. When we do the wrong thing and we, get, and we beat ourselves up and get all condemned, that really robs us of peace. And then grace was not given to us so that we had a license to sin, but rather 
Grace was given to us so that we would be free from sin. It sounds like just a play on words, but it's actually a very important play on words. And so grace was given to us so that we would be free from sin, not so that we would have a license to sin. Fear, worry, anxiety, these things destroy peace. Fear is faith. Faith in something bad is going to happen. Anxiety, worry is just another word for fear. Unforgiveness, bitterness and grudges. Mate, they rob us of peace real quick. Matter of fact, the Bible says that bitterness defiles many. It starts with you and that, <clears throat> and that defiling comes out of you and starts to in infect like a, like a coronavirus people around you. And so bitterness defiles many. And so that, that's a peace destroyer, not only for you, but sometimes for the people around you. I want to tell you a story of a, a friend of mine who was in ministry oh, some 30 years ago. And um, he, he used to take offence at all different things. He'd take offence at other churches. He'd take offence at leaders above him. He'd take offence at people in his church. And Anyway, he got so defiled by this offence, he ended up out of the ministry. And uh, to me, that's a, such a sad thing because he, he was such a gifted person. And now here he is in his 60s and he's looking at getting back into ministry. And um, the first thing he said to me, though, was he brought up all the things that he was bitter about. And I said, oh, no, doesn't sound too good. And so when I tried to challenge him about that, he actually got bitter with me. So... Um, we're still friends. That's good. To, that's good to hear. But he's just really um, just a peace destroyer. So, what is peace? It's very simple. Peace is, is trusting God. It's as simple as that. Trusting God. Nothing else. It's just knowing that God's got it. He's got your life in His hand, and there's nothing, even things that go wrong, even things that accidents or trauma or coronaviruses, or anything. No matter what we go through, we're still in God's hands. And so, um, just sort of late, I, I, uh, as many of you know, I handed my church over to my son, Daniel, and he's doing a great job. But uh, it's left, left me free to spend a lot of time with the Lord. And I started to seek him, like I, like I hadn't sought him for years and years and years. And um, uh, but, but I was so busy in my head, in my heart and my body that I could not stop long enough to get into the presence of God. And so after six months of this, I cried out to God and said, Lord, you've got to help me. Help me do this. Whatever it takes, Lord, whatever it takes. And I heard, <laughs> I heard this boy say, okay then. I went, uh-oh. <laughs> anyway, then, and this is not a point of pride or anything, but my, my wife has been blessed with incredible health. And Kat and I have never been to the doctor for anything in our whole life. Here I am now, I'm 60, 63, never, never been to the doctor for anything, ever. <laughs> and uh, well, a couple of stitches, surfboard hit me here, another one hit me here, got two stitches there, got four up here, a few things like that. But other than that, I've never been to the, the doctor for any sickness or anything. So, and then I heard this, the voice was so loud, it might as well have been audible. And it said this, you're going to have to submit yourself to medical authority, which is not my language, by the way. And um, and I, my response to that voice was, <laughs> not likely. <laughs> anyway, but then a couple of days later, I had a dream. I had a dream of a hand coming up out of the asphalt and grabbed me by the left foot, wouldn't let go. I started to speak to it like a dog, let me go, you mongrel, and I started kicking at this hand until it let me go and I walked away. Well... A few days later, I fell over and broke my left ankle, badly, and I had to go to the doctor, I had to go to the hospital, and I had to stitch two bones together with a bit of string through my ankle, with two titanium buttons on either side of my leg to hold the, the two leg bones together, because the membrane that holds those two bones together, I split it like a bit of wood. And um, <clears throat> so the two bones were hanging out free, and my ankle was totally unstable, as well as a couple of broken bones. And, um, and torn ligaments and whatever. So um, for three months, I couldn't get off the chair. And uh, then after that, I was on a walking apparatus where I kneeled on this thing and it was like a peg leg. And for six months, I was just out of it. And in that six months, I just learned to seek the Lord, learned to find peace, and I learned to enter into his presence. And so the first time that uh, Jesus appeared to me, was, uh, I said to Jesus, Jesus I'm, I'm going to stop asking for more of you. 
I now, I'm going to come to you. And so I just shut my eyes and let the peace of God hit me. And I said, Lord, I'm coming to you. And straight away I had a vision of Jesus standing there. And he had a, like a hoodie on and he was facing that way, but I knew it was Jesus. And I moved towards him really quickly, like I was on a conveyor belt, but quick. And then I knew it was Jesus. I'm just looking, and then this smoky mist started to come out of him. And it floated up towards me. And Jesus said, check this out. And when that smoky mist hit me, I was totally engulfed in a peace and joy. And I started to weep and cry and laugh all at, all at the same time. And this verse came to mind, my peace I'll leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not of this world. I'll get the scripture to read it in a minute. And, and I realised, here's Jesus. He's, he's, he's got so much to do, like he's God. And yet he does it in absolute, and the thoughts that I had while I was in this vision was chill. He's absolutely chilled, absolutely peaceful. And he just imparted some of that peace to me. And I want to tell you, it changed my spiritual life right there. And that every time now I come to the Lord, I just sit there, let the peace come out of me. And then I'm in a place of trust to be able to pray proper prayers, not fearful, anxiety, worry prayers. And so um, it was a fantastic experience. And I believe it's, a, it's, a, it's an experience that God wants every single Christian to walk in. Not so much the vision, but to walk in the peace. And... Um, Here's the scripture, John 14, 27. My peace I'll leave with you, my peace I give to you, not of this world, not of this as this world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. And so um, that story, uh, rather that testimony, influenced me so much. So then I went on to seeking God every day, and uh, I won't go into what they were or what happened, that's another, another sermon, but I just experienced so many different heavenly things just like that scripture says and um and uh you know i saw walls with him with gemstones embedded into it <laughs> and i could i could go on about all the weird things i've seen i hope i'm not um upsetting some people who might not believe in this sort of thing but i'll tell you what it was real for me and so it reminded me of king david and nathan when uh david you know he slept with Bathsheba and then killed her husband Mate, unkosher. <laughs> what a terrible thing to do. But then Nathan came and challenged him about it. And then David writes a psalm about his his guilt. And it's a Psalm 51. And it says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. <coughs> me. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me in your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. I love that. I actually love that part where, it's, where it says, Lord, <clears throat> restore to me the joy of your salvation and then I will teach transgressors and then people will be saved. People will be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud all your righteousness. Just, I'll stop there. It's a fantastic psalm. And um, so if you're there today and you're having any of those peace destroyers that I mentioned um, of bitterness, of fear, worry, anxiety, unforgiveness, condemnation, disunity. Um, I would encourage you to remember David. Come before the Lord. Ask God for his presence. Ask God to set your heart right before him and, and get into the presence of God. Because there's something I've noticed about getting into the presence of God. And that is that the more you're in the presence of God, the more holy life you live. And... Um, 
it's, it's like a, it's an automatic response. So much religion teaches us, if you want peace, you got to go for it. And we, we get into this striving mode. Now, I want to tell you, I'm the expert at striving. If I want to try and get something, I'll strive and strive and strive and strive. And uh, sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. But, you know, I still keep striving. So I want to get into the presence of God. So what I'll do is strive. There's only one way to enter the presence of God. And that's peace. In trusting God. And the more you enter the presence of God, the more peace you get, the more deeper you go. The more peace that comes, the more deeper you go. And it changes your behavior. And it's an automatic response. The Bible says, as we behold him, in, in 2 Corinthians 3.18, it says, as we behold him, he sends forth the spirit of his son into our spirit and transforms us into his likeness. That's one version. Transforms us into his likeness. So who does the transforming? The spirit does. Our job is to behold him. In other words, look, focus on Jesus, get into his presence, and the spirit will come and transform you. And I've noticed that... Um, not that I was a, a raving, sinning lunatic before, but I've just noticed that my my behaviour, my heart, my attitude is so much easier to keep right because I'm spending a lot more time in the presence of God where there's peace and there's joy and there's righteousness in the Holy Ghost. It's an awesome thing. Peace comes when we realise that God is the centre of you. God is the center of your life. God is the center of your business. God is the center of your family. And so what we do is quite often we are the center. We set ourselves up as we are the center and everything else revolves around us. That's real Western culture, but in actual fact it's so leading us away from the things of God where God is the center. And um, when our soul is chained to the things of this world, I find it very difficult to get into the presence of God. Like, for instance, if I'm having conflict with a person or someone's having trouble and I'm worried about it and I'm not trusting in the Lord, I, I, uh, I find it very difficult to get into the presence of God. And one night I went to go to bed and I said to the Lord, Lord, I really want my eyes to be open to the spirit world. I want to see things in the spirit. And anyway, I went to sleep and I woke up in the middle of the night and my face was on the pillow like that. My eye was sort of squashed, and I just opened one eye, just woke up, ding. And I looked out my window, which is right right next to my bed. And, I, and in Sydney here, we don't get really good stars because of the city lights. Now, I'm not in Sydney, I'm on the outside of the city, but the lights are still enough to wipe out. I can see the Southern Cross and the, and the Orion, but not much. You'll never see the Milky Way. And I looked, and the whole sky was full of bright stars, stars as bright as Venus or brighter, all through the heavens. I thought, ah, oh, the sky is different, because I look at the stars every night. The sky is different. And I, and I was so wondered by it that I lifted my head off the pillow so I could see with two eyes, and all of a sudden, the stars form, just formed lines of bright lights from the top of my window to the horizon, bright little round lights in rows, dead straight rows. And I'm there, what the hell's that? Speaking of a heavenly thing, using the word hell, what the hell's that? And I'm looking at it, trying to work out what it was. I wasn't thinking about God. I didn't feel like I was in the presence of God. I just saw these lights. And I thought, man, what was that? And I said to the Lord the next day, what was that light that I looked at last night? And he said, they're the angels. And I didn't think the angels, lights were angels, but anyway. But then I found out in the Bible that angels do appear as lights sometimes. I read the story of Paul in the upper room. He said there was lights in the room. And um, he said, they're angels, and they're there. I'm showing you how many angels are there for you when you pray to go and minister on your behalf. I'm like, what? Really? So I was ministering to this couple whose marriage was in real strife. And so I was laying in my bed and I said, Lord, I pray now that you'll send angels, ministering angels, to this couple. So that they'll get their, their life together. Anyway, straight away, I saw two of those lights outside my window and they took off like comets choof, in the direction that these two people lived. Anyway, I rang them up the next morning and said, hey, guys, going? They said, oh, John, you wouldn't believe what happened. Last night, we just had a breakthrough. We talked half the night and we're so much at peace with each other, we just had a real breakthrough. And you know what? And it's been like that ever since. I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> That's a good story. And so, um, so, I've realised that when you make God the centre of your life and you pursue peace, joy, 
and righteousness in the Holy Ghost, I want to tell you, your life will start to change and you'll see the world differently, totally differently. And so in Philippians 4, verse 4, um, I'm going too long here. I'll just re quickly read this scripture. Um, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, give prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. And the peace, get this, the peace, which surpasses all understanding. In other words, what we can humanly, we can't humanly describe it. It's something that just comes from the spirit. It's heavenly and it's deeper than any peace that this world can give us. And and the peace which surpasses all understanding, verse 7, will guard your, firstly, your heart. It'll guard your heart and then it'll guard your mind. So how many times are we playing a video over and over our head about some situation that robs us of peace? So if if the peace of God surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is Things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. If there is anything, any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. These things which you learned and received and heard saw in me, these do. And God, the God of peace will be with you. Church, I want to encourage you. If you rejoice always in God, in other words, stay focused on God. Behold him and his peace will come and guard your mind. Stop playing that video. Guard your heart, the hurt, the anger, the disappointment, the anxiety, the worry, whatever's going on there. And so we say focus on God. That's, you know what? Our job is so simple. Our job is not to get our life together. Our job is not to try and get pure and stop sinning. Our job is not to try and get rid of addictions. We have one job, and that is to say focus on God. Stay in his presence. And I want to tell you, um, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will come to you. And um, even if there's one person in your church legs that needs to hear this. I pray that they hear it, it changes their life, and they get the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Amen? Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for Lex and the church that he started down there. Be with them, be with these families that are in his church, Lord. Bless them. Father, I just speak right now the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. I speak to their church in Jesus' name. Lord, anyone who's suffering from anxiety or worry concerning recent events in the world, concerning relationships, concerning hardships, financial, business, whatever. Father, they'll just look to you. Let that peace come to them now. I declare it over them. I declare it over his whole church. And everyone that church touches in the wider community, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, this is a lot easier doing a message from up here. Number one, I don't have to drive eight, nine hours. I can put on a, a fancy shirt, but still be sitting in my trackies and my uggies. If you see them there. <laughs> in the comfort of my home. Pray to God. Anyway, God bless you all. And uh, hopefully I'll come down uh, next year. See you.